Hi everybody, welcome back to a tutorial. Um, this is the second tutorial and I just want to say a massive thank you to you guys that came to the Zoom session on Tuesday. I think we learnt loads, I think we got through quite a lot and um, if you weren't at the Zoom session I hope that you caught up with the Zoom session uh, when it was posted on YouTube. If you didn't though, I'm going to use this tutorial to kind of go over some of the fundamentals that we did in the Zoom session and um, just kind of, there's no, there's no bad thing in repeating stuff, okay? And so we're going to look at a few key things that we went over, including the kind of bow stroke, um, a couple of the uh, divise and non-divise parts, and the ending. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in this session. So I hope you've got your music in front of you. I hope that you have got a tuned violin and you're ready to go. Just a reminder, I hope that you've been watching your warm-up videos and doing as much listening to the music as possible. So if you're sat down, remember, please be sat properly, keep your feet flat on the floor, okay? And make sure that your posture is as, is as good as it can be. Make sure that um, your music is in a place where you can see it really easily and that you've got a pencil if you need to mark things in. So the first thing I want to look at is the bow stroke in Matachins, okay? Now, the bow stroke in Matachins, as we discussed on, on Tuesday in the Zoom session, needs to be very neat, and the up bows need to be ringing staccatos, okay? It's a bit like when you use pizzicato. Yeah, they need to have that same bar, bar, yes? The same definition, if you like. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you're going to do a U on the down bow and then double U for the two up bows, okay? Otherwise you get da, 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 which is a very boring sound. It sounds like this if you don't do it, it goes. There's not much definition, but if we think in terms of shapes in U, double U, yeah, you get. Okay, and those up bows, I want them to imitate ringing pizzicatos, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just going to play our F major scale, please, with staying in the lower part of the bow, okay, and doing U, W, U, W, yes, yeah, so like this. Okay, so you can join in with me. Do you see, my arm is very, very relaxed, okay, I'm not, I'm not gripping much with my bow. My fingers are nice and loose on the bow so they can do the scoops in the up bows, okay? So let's just do that together. Ready, play. Now we also talked a little bit about how that with the uh, down up ups, the dynamic changes. So we start at MF, which is, you know, moderately loud. Okay, and then we go to piano just before letter A. I think it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, around eight bars before letter A goes to piano, which simply means we're gonna use less bow, but to do the same defined bow stroke. So let's just play just the, ascending part of the F major scale, but with a piano bow stroke, okay? So we're going to do, yeah, little ones, ready, play. Okay, so we want to change the colors within this, but still maintaining that beautiful bow stroke, that neat, beautiful bow stroke. The next thing I want to have a little look at, of course, is the crescendo going into letter A, okay? Because we've got this really dainty little piano and then we go full into forte at letter A, which is a case of using more and more bow as we go through those two bars with the crescendo. So please find two bars before letter A. And what we're going to do is we're going to start those two bars with little bow, so... Yes, and grow the bow into letter A. So let's just try that slowly. Ready, play. Very good. And again, ready, play. Yes. 
So you want to be able to increase the amount of bow that you're using. If you're struggling to do that, simply do it on an open string. So pick your, maybe your open D string. Yes, and singing the melody in your head. So one more time. Ready, and la 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 la. Okay, so I'd like you to have a little look at that crescendo because it's the, it's the small musical things that make this so interesting. And if we don't do them, it can be, it can feel, it can all feel very, very heavy. And also, if you don't do the pianos, the fortes just sound a bit boring, right? We want it to be exciting music, exciting. It's a sword dance, remember, it's a sword dance. So what we're going to do next is we're going to look a little bit at the divise part for the first few bars of letter A, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play now the upper part of the divise. So if you're playing the upper part, this is for you, okay? If you're not the upper part, you could probably fast forward a minute or so and then go to your part. So this is letter A. I'm going to do the two, the two quaver upbeats into letter A, upper divise part, okay? So I'm going to count one, duh, duh, and come in, ready? One. Yeah, we're just gonna do that again. Ready, one. Good, okay. So if you are still working on that, just rewind the video and practice along with me. Remember what we did in the Zoom session? We were just looking at doing this, at doing the divise parts. If you've got two notes, just doing it with just the left hand to start with and then adding the bow, okay? Don't try and do it all at once, but I'm hoping you've already broken it down. Okay, and now this is going to be the bottom divise part. Now I hope that you've highlighted your part so that you can see easily what's what, because I really struggled seeing which was which. So that's why I highlighted my part. So this is the bottom divise part. Are you ready? Remember, in the lower half of the bow, down, up, up still, okay? One. Yeah, and again. One. Excellent, well done everyone, fantastic. So once you can do that, we're going to look at the non divise part, okay, that comes after that for the next, it's about five bars, okay. Now it's important, like I said before, to practice this with just the left, left hand first. So we're going to do that. I want you to put your violin on your shoulder. I'm going to do it like this so I can show you what I'm doing. So the left hand you're going to be doing, we're going to go like this. Do you see my fingers are moving and I'm making sure that my left hand knows what it's doing before I introduce anything more complicated with the bow. Okay, so let's just do it together after two, slowly. One, two, da. Okay, the fingers actually don't move that much. It's more the bow that moves, okay? So let's play it slowly now. One, two. look at please is the uh the letter b where the accents i think can be a tiny bit confusing so we just need to play each line slowly and for you to be able to follow along okay just remember what i said in the first tutorial you've got some c sharps and d flats in the bottom divise part okay and it's important to remember that c sharp and d flat are effectively the same note. They're the enharmonic equivalent of each other. It's the posh name. We don't worry about what that means. So just be aware that you know that that's coming up. And also, I find if you all count with me, one, two, three, four, five, sixth bar of letter B, I think the part looks a bit confusing and it's difficult to see that that sharp belongs to the F. It's an F sharp, okay? At first when I saw it, I thought, is that an E sharp? But no, it's an F sharp. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to play the lower 
divise part first from letter B, okay? And we're just going to play it very slowly, really listening for our tuning. Because the um, at this stage the, the, the music is so discordant, lots of clashes, we want the clashes to be correct clashes and not ones that we've kind of invented ourselves, okay? So we're going to play slowly from letter B, okay? So D sharp first. So make sure you've got your one on the D and we're going to put it back here for a D sharp, okay? Ready slowly. <laughs> Again, did you notice that I didn't play the non divise part in the second bar of B? I'm just going to keep it to the bottom line at the moment. Are you ready? Again, from the D sharp, lower divise part, letter B. Ready, play. <laughs> rewind the video and do it a couple of times with me. Brilliant job. And now I'm going to do the upper part for the top divise line, okay, from letter B. Slowly again. Ready, play. Now, I missed out the uh, lower bit slightly at uh, letter B at the end of that line. Let's just try it again. Ready, play. Good. Fantastic. So I actually think the top line is slightly easier in, in lots of ways. Well done everyone. So practice that a few times until slowly. Don't please don't try and play this at speed until you've absolutely got the intonation in your ears really, really well. Now I'm sorry I'm looking down, but I'm I'm staying with my mum at the moment and I haven't got a music stand here, so I'm so sorry. That's just my setup right now. That's the reality of it. <laughs> and hence why I'm sitting down. Normally I only teach standing up, but I haven't got a music stand. Um very good. Now we're going to talk very briefly about accents. Okay. Now accents, we need to, we did a lot of this on uh, Tuesday in the Zoom session about what the combination of things are for an accent. Okay. Now the accents, I would actually circle the accents in this piece because there aren't that many, but they become really, really important. So at letter B, there's some accents and obviously at the end, da, da, da. Yeah. So we need to work out, okay, what do we need for an accent? Because sometimes what we do naturally for an accent is we just put a load of weight in the string, okay? But we forget to release the weight. So the accent doesn't make any sense. We kind of go, but actually we need the release in order to hear the difference at the beginning and the end of the note. So what I want us to do is to remember you need a little bit of a pinch with your thumb, okay? Now I showed you a trick, I think, on uh, Tuesday with a balloon where you can practice with little pinches, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the bow on the D string and what I want you to do is I want you to pinch and use some bow speed but release the pinch as soon as you've got you as soon as you get going so we're going to do this do you see my hand my hand releases the the pinch ready and okay and again ready and so there's a combination of things there's a pinch a release some bow speed okay so what I'd love you to try is just a few of those at home on your own. So we'll just do a couple more with me. Ready, and. and we'll try an up by one. Ready, pinch, and. And again, ready, and. Very good, one more. Ready, and. Excellent, fantastic. So you need to apply those, those pinches, such as in the last bar of that line where letter B starts, you've got letter B, at the end of that line is a uh, accent. It's annoying that there's no bar numbers here. <laughs> so we're going to go, yeah? So you've got to remember that, okay, when you're when you're playing, to include the accents so that they, they sparkle amongst the music, okay? So taking that concept of accents, I just want to look at that, uh, it's the last four bars where we have that last visé section. And we've got these 
da, da, da. Okay, it's really important that in the very quick micro rests that we have, that we re-engage with the string before the next accent. Otherwise you won't be ready for the accent and you'll lose the accent and the excitement. So let's just play, I'm gonna play the top line. Okay, so we're gonna, remember, pinch and release. It's gonna go. Yes, so ready and. So just have a go at that, it's pinch release, pinch release, pinch release, but you need to re-engage the string in the rests. Well done everyone, you're working so hard, I'm so impressed. And remember, always pause the video if you feel like you're kind of getting a little bit tight and a bit kind of brain ache, yes? And go and have a little wander around your room, have a little stretch, have a little wiggle, make sure that you're not sat for too long. So don't, you don't have to do these tutorials all in one go, yeah? You can do them in little five minute sections if that's helpful to you. Now let's just go back to the sextuplet, which happens at the beginning of the last line. Now I said in my um, Zoom session that we were gonna use the words Figaro, Figaro, ta. Yeah, so it's Figaro, Figaro, ta is the, the ta is the, the, the crotchet um, in the next bar, okay? So if we take the top line, remember the left hand has to be active, yeah? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, Figaro, Figaro, ready and. <laughs> Ready and. Ready and. Okay, so make sure that you've practiced your figure row, figure row, ta, figure row, figure row, ta. Excellent. Now, the only thing left to do for this little tutorial is the ending, the double stop at the end. Now, what I'm about to say applies to both the top chord and the bottom chord. So please just use this exercise for both. What you're going to do first of all, is you're going to check which strings you're gonna need in your chord. Now for the top chord, you need the D string and the, uh, sorry, the D, A and E string, and for the bottom chord, you need G, D and A, okay? So you apply this exercise to whatever strings you use in that chord. So I'm gonna do the top chord. And what I want you to do is stay in the lower half, and I want you to take the D and the A string, okay, first of all, Remember what I said about the seven stringed violin? I said you've got E, you've got a note between E and A, you've got an A, you've got a string between D and A, a D string, and a string between D and G, and the G string. So you've got a seven stringed violin for, the, for this exercise, you have to imagine that. And we to find your imaginary string between D and A, and you're gonna simply do this. Stay in the lower half and not using much bow, you're gonna do this. sound it's not it's not fluffy sound it's a really weight in the string sound not using so much bow really ringing and again down up down up ready play right now what I want you to do is I want you to smooth it out so we're gonna go chord you do exactly the same thing but on the lower strings. Now what you're going to do is you're going to apply the fingers okay but doing the same bow exercise you're going to go now remember it's a fifth for the lower part and the bottom part the lower part and the upper part rather <laughs> so make sure you remember for fifths you can flatten the finger okay it's the time where your teacher allows you to flatten the finger the pad of your finger in order to capture the the tuning of the fifth. It's quite hard, but let's have a little, you can just test your fifth now. Okay, and you're just gonna simply go. So you're gonna practice that, ready, and. And then you would do the same with the bottom chord. So you can practice that exercise. So separate bows, separate bows, and then scooping and scooping. I hope that helps and I hope it is useful to you. I hope all those exercises have brought together the whole of Mattertons. Then just play it all the way through with one of the recordings. Remember there are apps such as Speed Shifter by ABRSM which you can download and then you can play Mattertons at a slower tempo until you're ready to speed it up. 
So please use apps like that. Speed Shifter is brilliant. Congratulations, team. I'm so excited to start the next piece with you. Yay!